So we got a new purchase that I want to tell you about. Ooh, I want to hear about it. <laughs> I, I know you like impulse buys. I'm guilty of a few. This one's probably the, just the, I don't know, the most old kind of thing you can buy for yourself. Like old person? Old person, yeah. Okay. Um, so you know our couch. I'm very proud of our couch. Yeah, it's nice. It's big and it's white. And it's cloth because I don't like leather. Uh -huh. um, but we've had it for like well over a year now. And it like started pilling <laughs> really badly. So okay. we got we got what's called a fabric shaver. All right. What do you do with that? <laughs> it you it looks like it looks uh, I'm making a shape with my hands right now. So that's not very helpful. I'm like picturing a, a cheese grater is what I'm picturing. No, it okay. looks like a little gun kind of thing, but like short, not a real gun, obviously. Like a snub nose pistol. Uh-huh. All right. And you just put it against your, your fabric, and you turn it on, and it, it goes whir. And then you <laughs> just roll, you just move it over the fabric, and it cuts all the little, like, pills off of it, all the little, like, stray pieces of stuff. So it's like a dog, uh, you know, like the, <laughs> the dog nail trimmer things that, like, kind of shave off the edge of it? Is it like yes. that but for your couch? Yes. <laughs> and, like, it fills up with the lint. And it is the most satisfying thing. Um, we spent several hours just watching a movie and just like passing it back and forth between <laughs> us. And like we were fighting over it, like we should have bought two because we're just like, I want to turn. Um, the only thing is, it's allowed and our dog hates it. He like kind of bites it whenever he can. Oh, it's like a vacuum cleaner to him, like a handheld vacuum cleaner. Essentially, yeah. And he, he does that with the vacuum too. So we're like, oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's our <laughs> new obsession is, is shaving our couch. Something wow. I never thought I would say. That's like, I mean, that could be expected of me. I'm in my thirties now, so that's like <laughs> middle-aged, but geez. I mean, Kyle's almost there Okay, and I'm yeah. about to be 27. So I'm, I'm, maybe I'm just early. Orion. Hello. We have a guest today. We do have a guest. Yeah. Orion, uh, our comrade pup. Oh, he... <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be part of the conversation. He also doesn't like vacuum cleaners, I think is what he's trying to say. Yeah, he's like, I disapprove of this new gadget. <laughs> it's bad for dogs. Oh, poor guy. Dude, well, that's that's an excellent purchase. I'm glad that you <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad that you're getting your couch in shape. You know? It was only like twenty bucks, so like yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to having a, a smooth ass couch. <laughs> 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 okay. Um what are we talking about today? What are you what are you teaching me? Today, I'm going to teach you about everybody's favorite person in the world, everybody who at least can't afford to buy their own house. Everybody's favorite person in the wor world is their landlord. Here we go. Oh, good. Yeah, we're going to talk about rent, landlords, um, what eh, what leftists, you know, kind of a leftist perspective on them, uh, not what you should think about it necessarily. I mean, we can't tell you that, but... <laughs> You know, kind of our perspective I mean, on it, at least. our opinions are correct, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's a reason they call Obviously. it the immortal science of Marxist-Leninism, but... <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 I don't, I don't like to get too dogmatic like that and say, no, this no, is no. definitely right, because, hell, I, how, do I, how would I know, you know? Exactly. So. We're, we're just two dummies here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know a little bit about some stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm explicitly the dummy in the show. That's my role. <laughs> I accepted it. I liked your idea of the supercut of, of, what does this mean? What is that? What is that? <laughs> it would be so embarrassing. One of my questions was like, what is the, what is free trade? <laughs> like, I, I'm like, I need to go back to school, I guess. 70% of Americans couldn't answer that, right? I would, I would venture to say. I don't know. And uh, here's the thing is I did a, a college project on it. Mm-hmm. We had this horrible kinetic sculpture project. It was, it was awful. And they gave you like two subjects. Mine was free trade and I don't remember the other one. But I ended up making it so like you had – it was like out of wood is what you're supposed to do. And I like made a, a crank so that two dowels would like go up and down like opposing each other. And on those dowels I put little figures and they're okay. like two businessmen. <laughs> this is my – this is so bad. This is – like freshman year of college okay so like i thought i was doing some good shit yeah man we all thought we were brilliant back then <laughs> i put a wire in between them and put like a little money block and they would just like kiss it back and forth oh that's what it was it was it was the kiss what you had to get like an artwork assigned to you too 
and mine was the kiss. And so I made these oh. two businessmen kiss money back and forth. It was so stupid. So here's dumb me time. The kiss is that like gold looking kind of painting with mm -hmm. the like that's person Clint. like draped over. Okay, that. Yeah, that's my that's my one area where I shine. Yeah, that's the least sophisticated way you can describe the kiss. Um, <laughs> I like it. So that is a that is a very neoliberal assignment is to blend <laughs> the kiss with free trade. Yeah. I mean, my art school is extremely like postmodern. Is like that's that's what they were into. So nice. yeah, it was it was horrible, and like you could tell other people also didn't know, like didn't understand what their words meant to. Like I saw some shit that in that critique, <laughs> we were all just like, oh, this is like the final. Can we just go to sleep? And I think mom still has that in the closet, and it's like my greatest shame. So yeah, it just sets your skeletons in the closet as a bad yeah, art. If I project. die. If I die, you have to burn that. Okay. <laughs> Just will that to me and I'll set it on fire. Yeah, yeah. I bet a lot of <laughs> okay. people, though, think free trade means well, you get you can go to the store and buy anything you want. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. So. You can trade Pokemon cards with whoever you want. <laughs> yeah. But no, okay. Uh, we Back don't know landlords. what we're talking about with landlords, but we're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> That's the point. Is right. Listen to us, but don't always listen to us. Yeah, I mean, like, listen to it, you know, form your own opinion about it. Like, if you believe anybody 100% on it, everything, it's kind of weird. You're like a disciple yeah. at that point, and that's strange. Yeah, we can't stand anymore. That's not a thing. I mean, you yeah. can, but it's it's always a bad idea. It's always going to burn you. True. Okay. All right. When we're talking about landlords, what's your first question? Like, what, what do you most want to hmm. know about landlords or rent or this whole system of that? So, I think... My question, okay, so I'm going to preface this with, like, my experience with landlords. Sure, yeah. I've always lived in, like, apartment complexes or apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. So, like, I've never had just one landlord guy that I know when I call up and be like, fix my sink. It's always been, like, a company. The management company. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of want to know what their role is. Maybe we can get that. Maybe that's, like, a later topic. No, that's we can cover that now. That's a good way to set the whole thing up because that is confusing to people. You know, you're face-to-face -face dealing with who whoever is the management company a lot of times if it's a big property yeah like my mine owns a ton of buildings like the ones i've been in before like they own stuff all over the metroplex mm -hmm. and what was weird i think my most the most interaction i've ever had with the idea of a landlord i don't know if a lot of people are like this or not is when like someone buys out that company and they're like, well, now our branding's changed and you know we we made these changes to our policy or whatever. But like, they bought out really... the management company. They bought yeah, like it's a new management company. A lot of times so. that doesn't have anything to do with the landlord. So the landlord oh. is technically the person who owns the property, and they hire a management company to manage the property for them. It's okay. like uh, whoever would own you know uh, McDonald's. And they had the franchise operators mm -hmm. all around, you know, like those guys okay. own the franchises or whatever. So it's maybe a little different there. But if you own like department store of some sort or whatever, the store manager is different than the owner themselves. Yeah. yeah okay. So they're just running the place. And so maybe someone like outbid them and they're like, okay, now I'll hire you. Yeah, it could be that. Um, it could be that someone like bought the management company and changed it all up, you know, but um, it doesn't yeah, really yeah. have anything to do with who owns the building. Okay. Um, but yeah, management companies can be on a big, huge variety, a big, huge scale in terms of you have some that are completely national. <laughs> you have some yeah. that uh, are just kind of, like you said, in the Metroplex. But those guys are the ones you'll interface with most times if it's a big operation. If it's small, a smaller situation, like you said, where you have a one person, you know, owns duplexes on a, on a street, yeah. you know, then you might deal with one or just a, few, a small operation like that, but. Yeah, I feel like individual landlords, I don't know if this is true. <laughs> I, my experience at least, I feel like they're more common in other cities. Like Dallas is very much like a building company place. Like it, it's just like, unless it's a duplex, unless it's an old house or something. Like we really don't have that many individuals that I've heard of at least. Um, no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I know, well, let's see, I, I rented in College Station and I had, I lived in like a townhouse situation. They had like kind of a, you know, one complex of these, of these townhomes or whatever. And we always dealt with one guy and he was like the main yeah. guy, you know, uh, and I lived in a duplex that was rented out by one person and stuff. So I, they may have owned other properties, but I only ever dealt with one person. So yeah, it was small scale there. Maybe that's how, 
how they do things. But they also had like big apartment complexes for, like closer to campus for the students, you know. Oh, weird. So. Okay. So I think some people maybe if you've only dealt with an individual landlord, maybe you have an idea of it being like, oh, that's the guy I call if something's broken or the woman I call, whoever. I don't know. Is that accurate? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you think of it in in that small scale, yeah, you're usually yeah. going to be thinking of your landlord as the person who fixes everything, who attends to everything, who deals with the property and takes your money in exchange for doing so and being able to stay, right? Yeah, so I think I think that's kind of my, one of my initial big questions is like I think people would make that argument that like landlords are fine because they take care of the property, they're they're caretakers. <laughs> And yeah, they they fix my shit for me. They mow the lawn if they if that's part of your contract, whatever. Even if you even if you want to look at it from the management company perspective, though, that's still kind of the arrangement, right? Uh, the landlord hires mm -hmm. a man. You know, they own the place. They charge you to stay there, and they hire a management company to take care of you, right? They Honestly, that's the reason I. I mean, not the reason, but it's one of the reasons I haven't gotten a house yet because I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. That sounds terrible. Yeah, you have to start making your pair or at least paying people to do these things, you know, making your repairs, mowing your whatever yard you have or landscaping it or whatever, you know, cleaning or not cleaning the place. You already have to do that. But like <laughs> anything, fix, anything In that theory. needs fixing or improving is up to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So like that's definitely been a reason that's hold, held us back. We just would not have had time for that. We came really close to buying a house and like the over the next year we kept being like, oh, I'm so glad we didn't buy because like we would not have had time to take care of it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. To people who would say, well, it's a fair exchange. The, the rebuttal, I think, yeah. from a, a communist or left perspective in general uh, is, okay, think about how bosses make a profit. Okay. Companies, capitalists, how do they make a profit? When you come into work, they pay you an amount of money, but they get from you more, more. than they pay you. Yeah. They're right? always undercutting you. Yeah. That's the theft that makes them the profit. Mm -hmm. All right. Rent and landlords are similar. You know, they do with the rent, they make an agreement with you that you get to live there. All right. That's part of what you're paying for, but they're going to do X, Y, Z in terms of maintenance and whatever. They're going to make sure that everything works fine. The whole thing uh, about that though is that rents are higher th than the value uh, than what it costs for the landlord to do that all right yeah. so they're charging you too much basically yeah there's no way maintenance costs that much a month like my rent's pretty high <laughs> yeah they're ripping you off and i remember we mentioned uh i think it was in our manifesto episode where you said well hey like you know don't they rip off consumers like in the store isn't that also bad you know mm-hmm and we said, well, not really, because you're not forced to buy the thing in this. No one's forcing you to go to the. Oh, but you're definitely place. forced to buy somewhere to live. <laughs> yes, this is a necessary <laughs> thing. You are being ripped off, and it's you know it's compulsory you it. because otherwise you're in a, a way worse situation. Yeah. So I mean, some people choose homelessness, but it's also like super criminalized here. So yeah, not not the best option. Yeah, and an overwhelming majority, you know, don't choose homelessness, or they might yeah. choose homelessness. It, within a very given set of options that are all crappy. Exactly. But yeah, no, that, I, th I think that would be the the main thing. The main way to look at it is, uh, yeah, your landlord is providing some stuff and letting you stay in a place. But the place, uh, in terms of ownership costs and uh, taxes and everything, costs them way less than the, the, what they're... Yeah, because it's not like... I mean, this, <laughs> this is coming from someone who has paid rent for like... 10 years now mm -hmm. a little less anyway i just like have the stupid realization of like yeah they're not like paying rent like they probably own it outright by now i mean maybe they're mortgaging it or something but like i if they've been around long enough they're, they're just sitting on it right a lot of times they uh i don't know honestly i was gonna say like because <laughs> i know that they do take out big uh big like investment portfolios and stuff and people like pour a lot of money into that to try to mm -hmm. get a return on their investment so they have like stockholders a lot of times they gotta pay but Think about the scale, okay? I mean, you you're, you own a big, huge building that's charging all mm -hmm. the units in there, or ninety something percent of it is yeah. where they usually keep their occupancy at. You're you're um, charging all those people multiple thousands of dollars to stay there. Yeah. Not all of them are going to need repairs. Not all of them are going to. Plus, need... all the fucking fees. Yeah. Like pet fees, especially like where we live, are so stupid. You had to pay yeah. a deposit. Which, like, that, I feel like you should just pay a deposit because what's the danger of having a pet there? They're going to fuck something up, right? Like, just pay the deposit and that's it. 
And, but like, no, a lot of places like you have to do deposit and then you have to do a recurring fee. Like my fucking dog is paying rent. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> It's just another way, you know, it's like uh, airlines now, how you have to pay for extra leg room, whatever. It's an extra, it's a, it's a way to, you know, to discriminate prices, like and yeah. ha exactly how much can each person pay while well, this person has a dog, they can afford a little more. Yeah. Another way to squeeze money, basically. That's insane. Um, also, quick aside, a lot of places have dog weight limits and that makes me really mad because <laughs> like small dogs can be bad too. Orion is also mad about this. <laughs> he does not. He like says, that. yeah, I'm a big dog. Body shaming dog. <laughs> Yeah, can we stop judging their bodies, please? Uh, the reason they do that is, and, and, and some places will also have what's called dangerous breeds oh, limitations yeah, yeah. or something. And uh, usually these uh, these complexes have either just regular, you know, hallways where people could encounter each other or, mm, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, kind of public grassy areas or something. And they're like, oh, I don't, you know, our tenants won't feel safe if you have a pit bull. Oh, my gosh. My pit bulls are nice, first of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. pit bull I met have been, has been so sweet. They're kind of dumb. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> sorry, my dog is very smart. I know that sounds like an asshole thing to say. He just, he knows lots of words. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's no, but um, I don't know. I think exploiting people's like pet ownership is bad. But it's, it's just not the fundamental thing, I guess, that landlords do that is bad and exploitative. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's rent just one is, of the, <laughs> is the big thing, you know? Yeah. Let's go back to rent. Well, you said basically it's ripping people off, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think for me and other leftists, like we think that housing should be universal, right? Yes. A hundred percent. Uh, if you yeah. don't think that, if you don't think everybody deserves like a place to live, uh, and just as condition of being a human being, like existing, I'm not talking like they have to go to work. I'm not talking that they <laughs> yeah. have to look for work. I'm not talking anything like that. Like they should just, as a condition of drawing air from into their lungs, they should have a place to to live if you don't think that i mean you should look at the other side of the political spectrum and see if maybe exactly i mean i think i think that's my big issue with conservatives in in general is that they have this idea that everyone has to like pull their weight and like earn things that like i just think we should just give to people and like to me it comes to this like kindergarten level like argument of like it's not fair <laughs> it's yeah. like i don't care what's fair i care what's like the right thing to do like it, it feels like a child being like, well, I only got this, so you can't have that, you know? Yeah. It's uh that's the, there's a phrase for it, but it's like crabs in a bucket or something mm. where crabs could totally yeah. crawl out of a bucket. But they, if, if you have a bunch of crabs in there, you know, one of them will like claw down yes, a crab. Yes. They to bring each out. other down. It's, yeah. I've seen videos of it. It's spooky. Yeah. Like that's that mentality of like, oh, everybody's got to work because I had to work hard to wear. Like, like the people who are saying I had to pay for college. So like, I don't want everyone else to get free college. <laughs> yeah. When college was way cheaper. <laughs> yeah. When college off. was way cheaper. But I mean, even kind of lame people our age will be like, yeah, you know, like I'm very open about it. Like, yeah, I went to college on scholarship, but like that's also because we went to a small ass town where like it was easier to be in the top like 2%. Like. <laughs> Yeah. I understand that would not have happened if we had lived in the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was something that we were actively trying to do because we thought we would just not go at all if we didn't. I mean, we probably so. wouldn't have. <laughs> um, <laughs> or we would have had crippling debt. So, I mean, it's. Exactly. Like it could have turned out way worse. But it's uh, those those things, you know, uh, housing, education, healthcare, all those things. Fucking like, food. Yeah. Uh, there should all be things that humans just have the right to. Um, yeah. especially, I mean, this should be something worldwide. Obviously conditions aren't such to where, unless we change, massively change the governments of a lot of different places, we couldn't really do that immediately. But, uh, that's something we want everyone to have everywhere. Yeah. I mean, again, if you, if you don't think that you should kind of question that belief, like why, you know, why don't, yeah. why do why, I, why is that so important to you that other people I mean, essentially have to suffer to get things that you have. Yeah. And there's an argument that like, okay, well, people will take advantage and just be lazy. You know, remember Marx's answer to that was, yes. hey, you know, people get paid more for less work now. So like everybody yeah. would be lazy if that's the people case. People already <laughs> do that. Like people who inherit a house or like, you know, or, you know, the trust fund kind of kids. Ooh. Like that, that's already a thing. Yeah. There's a, uh, I've seen this tweet or ask Reddit thing uh, several times. You know, just kind of one of those recurring jokes that people put on there but it's uh what's what's classy to do if you're rich but trashy to do if you're poor and oh. the top answer for that one is uh getting money from the government <laughs> that's very good yeah. i love that you know because you got these companies 
and they're you know they're getting tax breaks to where they're paying nothing and or then, negative taxes yeah you know and, and meanwhile you have people you know homeless because they can't afford you know yeah. an apartment I mean, where they live the whole like amazon fucking being wooed to come to different cities oh yeah. it's so gross yeah that's gross the pro stadiums thing when they do that is gross you know oh, yeah so that's all very gross i just the the main point here that we're trying to get to is you know you shouldn't really be too anxious about giving people a handout in terms of giving them a place to live you know but yeah housing's a human right housing is a human right yeah Definitely. And if you don't think it is, like, what the heck? Communism, socialism, 101. Bernie Sanders, he's just a democratic socialist, you know. Really, he's like a social democrat, but, like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's a reformist, a reformist and everything. But he thinks it's a human right, you know? I mean, yeah. all of us should definitely think that. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to kind of point out in this whole system, and, and, and a big critique of it, in America at least... Is that housing is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a scarce resource. No, it's not. Like, there's always empty units in here. I, like, you can just drive around and find empty houses everywhere. There's whole, like, developments being made where it's like, yeah, no one lives there. <laughs> yeah. Est they have to estimate the homeless population in, in America because it's a very transient and yeah. uh, population. It's estimated more than 500,000 people experience homelessness on a given night. Jesus. Uh, 553 thousand seven hundred forty two i guess is the average maybe because again it's an estimation so yeah yeah you know around that on a given night that's what you got so you know that's why you have, had bernie sanders out there saying you know out here on the streets tonight half a million people are, <laughs> you know that's what he was talking about yeah i'll let you guess how many vacant we'll, we'll only oh my god let's, let's only do let's only do the prop properties for rent all right oh, okay. how many rental properties do you think are vacant uh, Way fucking in more. The United States. This is uh, coming from the Census Bureau, first quarter of 2020. I want to say four million. This is my guess. It's going to be way more. It's slightly less. Three million. Oh, okay. I <laughs> overshot it. Three million That's... fifty-three thousand vacant for rent units in the first quarter of 2020. So yeah, we could house way more than. Vacant. Yeah, I mean, like they is could there? all actually get second <laughs> apartments. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my apartment. This is my yeah. dog's apartment. Uh, if you if you look at not just that, but vacant overall total, uh, you're you're looking at fifteen houses. million. Fifteen million. Fifteen million vacant. So many. It's not a question of scarcity. There's a lot. Okay, but what do you say to those people? Like, we can't just give away houses because people built the houses. We okay. That's the fundamental question, and the reason that we that we can't, you know, by that logic, we can't do that is because it's not good for the capitalists, the people who built the houses, the people, mm. the people who put up the capital for that. They're not going to get a return on it if you just give it away. So, if the building company was worker led, this wouldn't be a problem. Is that what you're saying? Um, not necessarily. Uh, situ I guess where it's at now, you just have to take it from or pay the the property owners, whatever, you know, for it, we, you had to compensate them to get yeah. out of this situation. Yeah. Cause the contractors have already been paid. I mean, that's not a problem um, unless it's like new construction or something and they still haven't gotten, you know, they're yeah. already going to get, they don't get paid out of the rent, you know? Yeah, that's true. The landlord already pays that. So at that point you're saying, okay, well the, the landlord's like, I'm not going to offer this for free uh, to people. So if you, you could either show up and say, well, tough it's ours see ya <laughs> this is mine now or you can like pay them through some sort of government program or whatever you yeah. know that's kind of operating within our means if you're talking about like we have a socialist government now you're not gonna have yeah. to worry about that because you kind of do the former but with the government yeah they they seize these properties the government see would. the means seize the means of production yeah so mm, in this okay. case seize that property that that private property, okay, because it is private property. They're making money off of it by charging yep. people rent and make it, you know, public Therapy. property. Cool. Yeah. And I don't know, the, that whole logic of, well, you can't just give it away because people, it's, that's the whole thing that Marx was saying about what happens in crisis is we're not, you know, stumbling around because there's just too much stuff like crowding. <laughs> so there are too many apartments. I can't make my way around, you know? Yeah. Um, and we're not, uh, you know, people aren't homeless because there just aren't places to, you know, oh, we can't, yeah, we don't there. have enough places. They're there, but they pe the people can't afford them at a rate that will 
sufficiently line the pockets. Yeah, I read a story, this was a while back, but I read a story that in New York, like a lot of entire buildings are bought up by like foreign countries, basically, and they're not renting them out. They're just like, this is mine now. (laughs) And like, no one can afford to live there. Yeah, some of that is money laundering. Uh, (laughs) Oh, Russian oligarchs and Saudi oil men and princes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I remember that was a joke on on 30 Rock. It's, yeah, it's money laundering. Uh, there, okay. there may be some legitimate uses to that, I'm sure, but yeah, it's probably Billy Money yeah. Laundering. I, so uh, I also read another thing about how Airbnb is causing a, a kind of similar problem where people will buy out these properties. Um, this is a big problem in Europe where they're, they'll buy out these properties and then not live in them and only use them for Airbnb and charge like crazy prices for them. And then people who live in that city like can't get a house because it's all being Airbnb'd. Yeah. Um, this would not happen in a in a communist <laughs> system in a socialist system this is because the goal of the housing industry the uh apartment you know rental multifamily industry all that what is the goal it's to make money for capitalists mm-hmm. when you buy your house you know you're buying it to live in uh, this is fantasy for most people i guess but when you, <laughs> yeah you know, you're buying it to live in but your mortgage company is selling it to you to make money you know yeah you know, when you rent your apartment, you're renting it to live in, but you're, the management company and the and the landlord, they're renting it to you to make money. Yeah, they're not, like, doing you a favor. <laughs> Even though they act like it with all, like, the application and shit, like, ooh, are you good enough to be why, here? Why should we rent? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. why should I take your money? And Convince then, they, you know, they put you through a virtual, not a real interview process, but they do, like, you know, ask you for, like, references and stuff. Yeah. And all that. And some of them are really intense. Like, my mine was fairly chill. It was mostly just, like, credit check and shit. But, like, some of them are, like, there's, like, boards and stuff, like, condo boards and oh, all I've that kind of, of that. shit. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, that sounds weird. Yeah. Sounds creepy. Sounds very creepy. No, but, like, the goal changes. Communists and socialists believe that housing should be done for people. You know, socialists, mm-hmm. go, you know, we're, we're pursuing the social uh, goals, not not private goals. We're pursuing, you know, we want to do this because it's good for people. Uh, yeah. That, you know, housing would be for use and stuff rather than for profit. Okay. Let's let's try something. I don't know if this will work. Let's try it. Um, let's try to work backwards. Okay. So let's say, okay, I, I like simplifying these things. We're in utopia land. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, we made it. What does housing look like? It's just it's just there because we can make it out of our fancy Star Trek replicators. Yeah, you can live in whatever you want. You can have... Oh, I can have my dream house. Whatever mansion you desire. Now, of course, you would run into ecological... Mm-hmm. And space. Ecological problems, space. Yeah, like I thought you meant like out in space Oh, no. Problems, I but... mean like having enough space to build. Yeah, and yeah. Not everyone can have a huge sprawling mansion because you'd run into each other. That's true. Um you would either have to colonize other planets so that you could have all the space oh. you want, uh, or well, okay. So what? What if you do this? This is what how I might present it. What if you have uh, you build a lot of fancy mansions? You build a lot of kind of middle class homes. You build a lot of more smaller, you know, smaller Tiny apartments homes. and things. Yeah. So you build a, a variety of these in a in a sustainable way that doesn't fuck with the earth, and then you have kind of a you know, you draw lots and it's like this year you live here, this year you live there, or oh. this period of time you live. And it's up to, you know, you can say, no, actually, I kind of like it here in in the lower couple tiers. If you tiers. like the smaller ones, yeah. you can stay. Yeah. And then if you, you know, everybody kind of gets a turn in the mansions or, or whatever, something like that. Oh, wow. That'd be a pain in the ass. I hate moving. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> might not want to do it move. every year, you know, you might want to do it every few years or something. But then again, you'd also have people who either... Robots, or you could just, you know, uh, vaporize <laughs> you whatever, considered robots? <laughs> whatever old furniture you have and replicate new oh, stuff. Oh, that's true. That's um, true. Okay. So that's fantasy land. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess we go back from that to like super socialist land. So super we don't socialist. have replicators, but like we're doing our best, damn it. We're doing our best. Yeah. All right. Step one, everybody gets a house immediately or gets, you know, gets a shelter. Immediately. So if you're in an apartment, no more rent. And if you're in a house that you're paying off, you own the house now, or hmm. how does that work? Uh, I guess <laughs> I'm grilling you. So uh, sorry, my so my immediate concern was the the homeless, homeless at that time. Yeah, they get a house. Uh, they That's get, totally fine. Put them somewhere, you know. Put them yeah. in an apartment building. Put them in an empty apartment building, which is what we should fucking be doing. Put them in a hotel, wherever. Just put them in there. Yeah. 
um, give them a choice to the extent possible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get them someplace. We have family somewhere. Go for it. Then, yeah, okay, so rent uh, for for people living in apartments, I would put a, okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, to, so initially, I mean, initially, if we're talking day one onwards, like socialism takes yeah. over, and, right? So initially I would put a, uh, you know, a thousand dollars or something, yeah, like a, this much is covered. You know, so however much of rent, oh, okay. fifteen hundred, two thousand, whatever is so covered. Like a stipend. Yeah, and then the rest of it, because I mean, you do have people living, in, paying rent that are in real luxury situations. You'd That's obviously true. have to adjust for New York versus other places. Yeah, you know, yeah. That doesn't, you know, two what two thousand three thousand dollars or something gets you a closet to live in there well or that's something. the thing is that like i i'm wondering how we would resolve that kind of stuff because like yeah i'm i'm paying for like a pretty nice place but like it's also pretty small so like I don't, I don't know how to resolve that like i don't know what the actual worth of my place is it's just because i'm like downtown uh, i don't know i don't know how to do that um, <laughs> this is hard guys <laughs> uh, eventually you know where whatever intermediate step you take eventually you would just be like no no rent uh it, it'd be best to just have the government nationalize the places. Okay. Government being under the worker's control, it's not like now where you have, you know, basically the mortgage companies and the banks running the government anyway. Yeah. You know, in this situation, you would have, you know, people owning the buildings either through the government or through local workers' councils. Uh-huh. And then they could, you know, abolish the rent through that process. Okay. So the only, maybe the only thing, let's say it's a worker-run building- um, or like a kind of co-op thing where like me and everyone else in our building gets together and we're like, Hey, we own this building now together. Hooray. So okay. the only thing is we would gather funds for whenever something needs to be fixed. Yeah. So you could do that and you could still honestly just charge, you know, some sort of rent. Like, right? yeah, but like, um, it'll be way lower cause we're actually only using it for fixing shit and not for making It'll be profit. way lower and whatever surplus that you got would be decided on what to do by the residents. Yeah. Like, okay, let's make a green space or whatever. Yeah. This is my dream. <laughs> um, so that would be kind of a localized way to do it. Okay. But if you're nationalizing it, then it's that on a much larger scale, basically. Yeah. And you would have to run some things national because you have to basically redistribute money from some places to others. Like the homeless, they're not going to be able to afford any of the yeah. any of the costs of that thing. They, they just, you know, their buildings would fall down to disrepair if it was up to them because they don't have any resources to fix that. Yeah, so for you, sure. For you'd sure. have to have, you know, some ground level, like th your building will Base. be maintained. Yeah. At least as much. And then you're free to kind of. Okay. Upgrade yeah, that sounds that, good. Guess. All right. Well, let's go for our incrementalist friends. <laughs> what will we do in the short term, I guess? Uh, hey, so mentally for me, when it comes to mind, I think incrementalist, you know, that's some bullshit. But I, think I so don't too. really want to disparage it that much <laughs> because while it is bullshit in terms of like, this should be our goal. It's, you know, it's not, it's not the goal we have. It is not bullshit in terms of really getting stuff done for people in our right capitalist now. hell world. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like, <laughs> like Mark said, we, we take allies wherever we can get them. So yes. like, mm -hmm. sure. And we do want to fight for these, you know, for, for improvements for people that will help them right now while recognizing that that's not actually all we want to do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We can multitask. Incrementalist steps, lowering rents. Yeah. That'd be great. Uh, uh, years ago, there was the guy in New York who was running for something that said the rent is too damn high, you know, and he was kind of mm -hmm. a joke candidate or something. He was right. I mean, the it rent fucking is, is. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts there. Like my, my best friend lives up there and it's, it is insane. Whenever I go to visit them, I'm just like, this is a closet. Why do you, why do you live here? How much do you pay? Like it's insane. Uh, housing for the homeless. Yeah. Um, I'd like either that. Either put them up in vacant units. I mean, immediately put them up in vacant units and then build things for them. If you want to, you know, if the grubby landlords want to get their hands back on there, uh, you know, on those units that went to the undeserving homeless and they can pony up the cash to build up, build some place that they think that the homeless should be living in, and then they can have their place Ooh, back. That might be bad. They got to have some oversight on that. Oh, sure. Yeah. We'll tell them you have to do this. You have to do that. <laughs> yeah. It has to, to meet that. these codes. You know, just like um, the Affordable Care Act put in, put in regulations on what uh -huh. minimum things that healthcare, <laughs> you know, plans had to do. We can do the same with home. And they're not going to be great. Uh, they're still not going to be excellent. You know, yeah, but in yeah, the interim, not. that's something that you could do to get housing for the homeless is say, Hey, good. look, you know, these, this vacant unit that you're holding up now, someone homeless lives there. If you ever want to see it again, put your funds in, you know, pay yeah. this tax and we'll build you a place for them. So 
I think one of the big reasons that I think that housing is a fundamental right, same thing with healthcare, is that it is such a block to prosperity. Mm-hmm. Like, if you can't afford rent, like, that is your constant struggle. Like, literally all your paycheck can go to rent. Or if you had a health problem, literally all your paycheck can go to a health problem. And, yeah. like, it is really that wage slavery thing we we're talking about. For many, many, many people, it is just your money's already gone by the time you as make it. As soon as you get your paycheck, the landlord, you know, the doctor, everybody sets upon you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's like, how are you supposed to, you know, like people who are stuck in situations like that, you know, I don't like my job. I want to go back to school or, you know, I want to be able to move to wherever to pursue my dream like how the Mm -hmm. fuck are you supposed to be able to do anything in this in this society yeah like there's so many barriers like i really hate when people make these arguments like oh if you live in a red state just move like do you know how expensive moving is guys (laughs) like first of all you shouldn't have to be run out of your home because some racists live there yeah but like secondly moving is a privilege Mm -hmm. it's expensive and, you know, it kind of ties it, like you said, oh, if you live in a red state move, that's kind of one thing you hear. And you also hear people saying like, well, you should just learn to code. Or you should just learn, you <laughs> exactly. know, learn some skills or, you know, you shouldn't be flipping burgers, go to school or something. Uh, but like flipping burgers should be able to afford you a place to live and like good health care. Like, I don't think anyone is worth less because they make food. Like, you want your burgers, like right? <laughs> I love burgers. Yeah. I mean, well, the people who are saying this, like, they want their burgers. They don't. They they don't want. They're not to be burger flippers. They don't have robots that can flip burgers yet. So what they're asking for is to see some people as less than deserving. Yeah, an underclass of people who will flip their burgers yeah. and should just be happy about it. You know. Yeah, and it's this weird fantasy they have that everyone who works like a part time job is a teenager, which is just not <laughs> true. Yeah. <laughs> They're always like, oh, that's just a summer job. And it's like, no, fuck off. Like, those are real jobs and we yeah. should be able to treat them with dignity. That was a summer job for you because you were yeah. lucky and you went on to do something else. But yeah, it's not a summer job for yeah. a lot of people. I think that's that's a really big theme too. Is the people are not willing to admit their privilege where it's like they fucking need to. <laughs> and being privileged doesn't mean that you have everything done for you. Like, we had certain privileges growing we up and for we sure did. still weren't like upper middle class even. But like, yeah, like people think, oh, no, 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 no. No, I earned everything I got. I had no privilege. Yeah. Because I'm a good person. You know, exactly. Like, like I'll fucking lay it out right now. Like, I married rich. <laughs> like, if something happened to us right now, if I got hit with a fucking debilitating disease, we, I could go to my husband's parents and be like, hey, I'm, I'm in trouble. And they would bail me out. And so many people don't have that safety net. Yeah. And like, people will not admit that. Yeah. I, I think that's a big, that's a big issue. And it ties into, into the housing thing. Like we were saying earlier, you know, oh, you can't just give that out to people because they'll, you know, they'll take advantage and just live wherever for free. I mean, that would be fine. (laughs) Like, you know, it's. Yeah. I mean, like, let's be real. Like you all took advantage of it with your privileges. So like fucking chill about it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think that's the main point there. (laughs) We got mad. Okay. um, Okay. So let me ask, we kind of already covered this a bit, but like, I think there's an argument like, okay, what about small, small time landlords? You know, are are all landlords bad? Like, I think it's easy to be like, okay, you own a million properties and you're clearly just like profiting the fuck out of them. You know, if, if I just, if I. A big faceless corporation. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think a lot of people in this housing market will buy a house and rent it out. And then eventually maybe they want to live there or they just use that secondary income. Mm -hmm. What about those people? Are they bad? I'm going to say yes, but that's that's my guess. All right. Your guess is they're bad. Why do you think so? Uh, I mean, they don't, they don't fucking need a second house. <laughs> like, I don't think anyone should be allowed to have a second house. I think okay. that should be illegal. <laughs> Not when we have 500, 500. I think if you... Ooh, I like this idea. President Christine. All right. If you have enough money to buy a second house, you should not be able to get it until you can afford a third house. Third house goes to a homeless person. Then you can have your second house. <laughs> Are you suggesting a BOGO for your second house? Yes, it's a BOGO. Okay. (laughs) Basically like, okay, I want to buy a second house. Sure, put in an application through our process. Yeah. And then start saving for your third house because you can't buy a second house until you can afford a third house. And then that third house goes to the... Yes. To the homeless bank. I like that. Or or you can... Maybe you buy the second house and while you're paying off the mortgage, a homeless person lives there. And then once it's paid off, you can have it. And then oh. you can start subsidizing the homeless person's house. I don't know. I'm I'm spitballing here. Spitballing, but I like the the notion, the idea that you have to pay something back, right? You can't just mm-hmm. lux it up without giving something in return. 
forced. It's like forced charity. Essentially, yeah. And that's what I want. I want like, I don't think it's okay that people get to decide to give money. I think it should be forced. Well, that's just taxes and spending. I mean, it's just tax classic tax and spend liberal. Sorry. Except you actually are doing it, which is good. Modern <laughs> liberals don't really do that anymore. No, they just, they just talk about it and then come in with a compromise and then get that compromised even more. Yeah. It's great, great at losing. All right. Uh, are all landlords bad? Small scale landlords are, I think there are degrees, you know, I think that they're less bad. Yeah, it's it's like with your you know with your businesses and stuff. It's like oh, don't shop the, the small big box store, store. Go to the mom and pops. You know. Yeah. Okay, but the mom and pops are still paying their workers less than they get from them. Okay. Mm -hmm. The landlords are still charging more than they give in return. You know. Uh -huh. uh, at the end of the day, uh, when we read the manifesto, they talked about one of the tendencies of socialism was that one that wanted to turn back the clock a little bit to where it was a uh, small scale, but in charge of modern industry. Remember like, like guild shit. Yeah. Like put the guilds yeah. in charge and, and small scale agriculture. You said it was like shopping organic or something. Yes. You know? Yes. That's kind of what we're talking about here is, uh, you know, if we did so, that, it, you have artisan <laughs> landlords. <laughs> so but, yeah, my building is now owned by one person or maybe even like they divide up the units within it or something. So it's multiple people. Like it becomes a lot smaller scale. But then the day I'm still paying someone more. Like ev my rent isn't going to fix my apartment every month. It's going to line their pockets every month. And it's not going to lead to a situation where they provide any more housing for the homeless for one. Mm -hmm. And for two, like, yeah, it might, it might even significantly improve things for people if they're living in a place that's run by kind of a more shady management company or <laughs> landlord or whatever, you know, it might improve things a lot for them if they get a, you know, a landlord that is more attentive to their needs. Sure. But it's not going to change the fundamental underlying thing that you're getting ripped off, you know, and you're getting ripped off for something that you need. Could we tax landlords? Sorry, I'm such a taxer. Could we say, I don't know, basically cap landlords at a certain profit? Be like, okay, if this is your only job, first off, this is your only job. I don't like when people have a job and also do landlord shit. I'm like, you already have money. You don't need this money. <laughs> I do that to myself. Like, I don't like my artist money does not go to me. I, I give it to other people because <laughs> like I have a job. I don't need money. Yeah. But I think I think more people should do that with, with like landlord shit. So what if we say, okay, if this is your primary job, you can make you can make a living for yourself. Congratulations. I don't know what that entails. We find some sort of reasonable amount and then say, no, you don't get any extra though. Like we cap their income basically. And all of that goes to housing for the homeless. I mean, you'd solve homelessness pretty immediately there. Uh, just cause that's a lot of money. <laughs> See, president Christine has the right ideas. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, think of what you do if you do that across the board for other things. So, you know, you, the problem with this solution is unless you actually already have brought about a worker's state or put the workers in control of, of the, of the government mm -hmm. or at least have vast popular under our current, you know, if you just, if you were elected, right. Yes. If, if you're in power, first I would, I would change the name of president to tax czar. <laughs> but like, let's say you're put into power, but there's no yes. change in, in terms. No, no, nothing else changed. We wake up tomorrow and you're, you know. Yeah, I, I have become There's no president. change in voting patterns. There's no change oh, in participation in democracy. Money and politics. There's no change there. in the rest of the Senate house, the, the whole government structure. I think I'd kill myself. You, uh, you're. A, you wouldn't get this through, but let's say that people just like decided <laughs> to go along with you. I'm very convincing, very hot. Everyone just wants to be my friend. Unless you build a mass political movement and social movement mm -hmm. to prop this all up and, and to, okay, to basically threaten uh, the structures of government to do this or else, uh, with the, the next campaign or, you know, two campaigns after that, it's it's not a long time before someone the forces of reaction are going to be back there saying why yeah. don't we just go back to making more money you know and stuff like that like they're going to roll back the clock even a very successful social democratic movement like this okay like mm -hmm. talk about the new deal yeah. that lasted for a long time for a long time republicans were scared to move against it yeah because it was so popular but eventually they did yeah eventually they did yeah. So unless you have a sustained movement like that, like they'll roll back these, you know, these taxes. I mean, how do you everything. build a sustained movement? I mean, I feel like you just have to fucking do it. And then everyone's like, oh, this is good. You do need to do that. And then you need to also have a, you have to have popular support. People saying, no, this is, yeah, this, like you said, this is good. And you have to keep that up. You can't let 
people get complacent with it and say, well, what if we open up a little bit of privatization and, you know, gets away from you. Okay. I feel like we're jumping all over the place, but I'm kind of okay with it. So it's fine. It's, we're still on kind of the topic. <laughs> We're on the topic of landlords, yeah. But like, I, I don't know. I feel like your outline was so neat. And I was just like, let me fuck it up. <laughs> what about this? Yeah. No, it's fine. Class discussions don't have to just follow the teacher's plan. And some of the best ones don't, you know, you, you get. Okay. Well, on that note, I have another, another question. question. Um, fuck, I forgot it. That's okay. In the meantime, I'm going to ask answer the original question Okay. with uh, small landlords basically leave the original problem in place. Uh, they're a little bit more attentive. Ultimately... What you want to do is provide a basic guarantee that people are going to have housing. And one thing that I think comes of this is if that everybody's guaranteed housing, they are less desperate to go along with whatever the landlord demands for rent. And so rents should be a lot more reasonable because landlords realize that they don't have people hung yeah. out by, by the scruff of their necks. I can it's just like go a, to a free house. Yeah. It's like with, uh, if you guaranteed healthcare, instead of it providing it through people's employers, they're not Ugh. as beholden to their employers. Or if you guarantee yeah. everybody a, a job or an income, uh, they're not as beholden to their boss, you know, like exactly. They, I'm not like terrified to lose my job. Yeah. And that means they can't abuse me. <laughs> exactly. And that means the landlords have to step up and like actually take care of rebuilding and make it an attractive place to live and not fuck you over and be like, okay, your pet rent's gone. <laughs> yeah. At that point, they're a service, you know, and they, they fancy themselves that way already. But yeah. at this point, they would really be like extraneous, you know, they, they're, yeah. they're above and beyond. They're a luxury. They're here to provide guy. you more of a community almost. Yeah. Instead of, yeah. I need a place to live, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I remember my, my question. All right. What about rent strikes? What about rent strikes? Okay. I feel like that would work. What's your current idea of a rent strike? What, do you, what, what, what does I it look like to you? I think we do it. I mean, I've been daydreaming of a general strike with coronavirus. I think like it's the right time to do it. We're all, I mean, not we're all, but privileged people are working from home. So they don't have a fucking excuse to tap out. Mm -hmm. And then all the privileged people who have extra groceries can go around helping people who don't have groceries. Like we just fucking have a general strike. That's my, that's my big dream. But we can do a rent strike too. Um, I think we just stop paying rent and just no one does it. And they can't kick all this out because there's too many of us. Like they just physically don't have the resources to do that. And I don't know. We just say like, I don't want to pay rent anymore. I don't, I don't have a great, I don't have a great formula. Obviously I'm just, I'm just talking out my ass here. Awesome. No, I, uh, no, I like the idea. It does require a little more organization then, but like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the basic, uh, that's the basic framework of a, of a rent strike. So like, would the rent strike be like, okay, we're not paying rent until, I mean, your demands can be whatever you want, I guess, but I guess my demands would be until you lower rent and make it like affordable or sliding scale, even like based on your income or you like use the profits to help homeless people. Okay. Yeah. Generally rent strikes are organized through tenants unions, mm -hmm. um, which are not always official bodies. They're just unions of tenants okay. who live in a particular place. It can be in a building, it can be citywide or neighborhoods, but the idea behind that is you have to get a critical mass of people in your building or your complex or your city or whatever to participate in the rent strike. You're right. The rent strike is essentially not paying rent and making demands. Yeah. I would even like, I mean, I think in this current era of the fucking COVID, I would do it just to be like, you have to give us a rent check every month, government, or we're not paying rent. So you do it national? Yeah. I think we, if we did it nationally and just be like, look, we can't fucking live like this. And like rich people do it too, even though we can live like this. And just to show, show solidarity with people who fucking can't afford rent right now. I think that's harder to do. Oh, man. <laughs> it would be ideal, but organizing nationwide is even yeah. harder than just the small pockets. Because then, I mean, okay, then you got to get every, you know, you're going to have, you know, jackasses in. Yep. You know, and affluent suburbs in Texas being like, well, we don't need to, please mm -hmm. don't give us a check government or whatever, you know, and yeah. all this stuff. Uh, Cause it's already harder to do. Like it's easy if you have a kind of a management company or a landlord that owns just kind of like, a, you know, this complex and that's it or something, because then you just need to organize that complex and that's a hundred percent of their revenue. You know, if you got somebody that owns all these properties all mm. across the city, they might be able to afford uh, nixing your apartment complex, actually shoving everybody out. Oh, Jesus. They might could do that. So, so yeah, basically the idea is, you know, if you, if you maintain solidarity with your tenants, you have to go, you have to make sure that almost either everyone or almost everyone in, in that building 
can actually afford to do it. If you go on rent strike by yourself, listeners, don't do this. If you go on rent strike by yourself, you'll find yourself evicted because the landlord can quash you real easy. You're one person. Who cares? All right. Their occupancy percentage is not going to drop by much. They're already accounting for, you know, one or two evictions a month, a month, just as like the cost of doing business. They don't want it to happen, but they're fine with it happening. Don't, you know, don't do that. They will just throw yeah. you out in the street. Jeez. But if you have your entire apartment complex, you know, your building doing that or most of them, yeah. they, can, they can't afford a, a, they can't afford a 15% occupancy for, you know, for very long. So I guess my question would be, I think a lot of places are owned by like just one person, you know, like they own multiple properties. So there's really no way to do it then unless you get all the properties involved. And a lot of times those are sprawled out across like a city or something. Yeah. It's hard to do. Um, you can do it. And so I guess I don't mean that if you only, if you still have the almost all of one building of a, you know, a, a big management company going, you know, doing a rent strike, that's still pretty significant in terms yeah. of their damage to them, unless they're like a, national chain or something, mm -hmm. then that should still really cause them problems. So I don't mean to be too discouraging with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but some like cities have tenants unions, uh, the bigger cities, at least, you know, I think they have one in Austin, they have different ones that can organize kind of across the city. I think it's really important for people living in places that have strong tenants unions like that. If you're renting, you should join those because if enough of you do, you can not, you know, not just in this current situation where people do need to go on a rent strike so they can like survive. Yeah. But in the future, when you're just fighting for better conditions and stuff, you have more of a say that way. Yeah. You know, it's like we were saying, like a lot of, a lot of these big cities just charge the fuck out of you for really shitty places just because you're in a city. I'm like, that's, that's not okay. Yeah. Especially because you know that they're making profit off of you without fixing shit. I'm like, they're not, they're not doing, they're not holding up their end of the bargain. Mm -hmm. It's a shitty yeah. bargain, but still. Yeah. The, the thing, the interesting thing about rent strikes is when they, when they happen, you really see the kind of the mask come off with the, with the landlords or whatever. Like they, they start, they start really whining and, uh, and getting scared and showing their hand that like, this is a big threat to them. I saw this article, uh, in the, I think it was in the new Republic. They were talking about a rent strike that someone was, participating in, 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 uh, Philadelphia against a particular management company. And they got a response or something from uh, one of the management company's attorneys. And they I'll just read a couple of things from it. Cause it's kind of funny. New age is a management company. So they're not the owners of these properties. They don't have the authority to provide rent relief to a tenant absent the landlord's permission and wouldn't do so. Like, it's like, no, it's not even our fault. Oh, know? poor things. But then they go on to say, uh, you know, working with the tenants and the landlords, they make the very reasonable ask that a tenant who's experiencing hardship demonstrate to them to that hardship uh, so they can talk to the landlord about it and secure some sort of relief. Uh, basically, they want to do like one on one, you know, come to oh us individually. Gosh. We'll make you a deal. It'll be fine. Ooh. Why do they want to do that? So, so that they, they can break can... up the strike. Yeah, because one person's easy to deal with. They can, you know, it's just it's scab. They can pressure striker. them. Yeah. They're trying oh, to. Man you know, help one person as little as they can and you know, as, as little as they can get away with so that they don't have to actually give in. Yeah. Or help someone like a moderate amount. So they don't have to help everyone a little, you know, cut yeah. someone a pretty good deal. So they can be like, okay, well now I don't have to do it for everybody. Yeah. 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 Uh, they said the, the new age tenant council's demands are absurd and they ignore the realities of the situation. They've presented an entitlement mentality. Yeah. Oof. Are you poor enough to get help? Yeah, but it's it's, it's basically what the land, landlords uh, think about us already. You know, I think about anybody who rents is these guys just want to take for free. You know, I I mean I, I we've mentioned this several times, but like it's it is hard to own property now. Like it's mm -hmm. it's a pretty minority position to have. So I think when you look at people who own these buildings and own these properties, they most likely own more than one. So yeah. unless you know, like we talked about small scale, but that's not what I'm talking about. So like we're talking about people who own, you know, multiple properties and all their primary income is fucking, you know, lying in their pockets with people's paychecks. So like they have enough money, <laughs> like they don't, they don't need that much. Like it's just not a thing. And it's ghoulish to me. Just like you are, you're buying a fucking, you're buying, you're using your money to buy another property so you can get even more money. Like, it's just like, you don't need that. Yeah. You don't. You really don't. <laughs> I mean, that's how I feel about most money. Like, I just, I just want to cap everybody's money. Like, you just shouldn't be allowed to have that much because not, it's not fair. 
Yeah, um, it definitely isn't. I mean, Again, it's tax are. Yeah, you know, in the in the in the interim, you can just kind of tax that away until you have an actual socialist situation where you can just not have that exploitation going on, so nobody yeah, can ever accrue free. that much money anyway. So the idea um, is we tax it the fuck out of it until housing is just so prevalent and easy to get that they don't we don't need landlords anymore. Well, I mean, yeah, taxes will help fund, but you, I mean, you still have to. Taxes get money for the government, right? But mm -hmm. you still have to actually create programs to spend that money on things that are good and not like bombs to drop on people. Oh, no, no. I mean, like, though, though that money would directly go to housing homeless people. And then once we've done that, we start doing low income people. And eventually, yeah, we yeah. get everybody covered. Yeah. And, you know, listeners, we've been mentioning a lot of uh, like kind of legislative ideas and fixes and things. They don't happen unless you have broad, a broad popular movement. Like, you, I mean, if you think Mitch yeah, McConnell yeah. is going to let any of this happen, no. <laughs> you know? He'd rather fucking cut yeah, off. He would. Up. Yeah. If you've ever seen the Buddhist monk immolating himself in Vietnam, <laughs> like that's that would be Mitch McConnell before he allowed this to happen. Oh yeah. Um, you know, uh, you, you don't. You, but you don't get it with Nancy Pelosi either. You know, you don't get it oh, with yeah. with just regular liberal Democrats or they don't want it because they're property like, owners and yeah. I'm, I'm sure lots of them are landlords or have friends who are landlords and all that shit. Yeah. They might not be directly in there, but it's in their class interest. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't get these changes without big societal wide, uh, moves forward and you can't get yeah. that without organizing. I think we should go to our organization corner. Okay. Um, this week on organization corner, we have, we actually did something for once. <laughs> Look at us. I know. It took two minutes, but I joined the DSA. Nice. Yeah, I did too. I thought that I might not be able to because I was, I was, I, I talked about it with my wife who is not quite as, as left leaning as I. Can we, can we tell the listeners about your agreement with your wife on, per donating to things? Cause I think it's very funny. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. That we, um, we, we've kind of agreed that we can't donate to like, various you know political causes or whatever that we disagree on you know that, that yeah. we don't both support so i can't you know donate to some of the causes that i have first but you know she's also not donating to to more right-wing stuff <laughs> <laughs> um but in this case i was just like hey can i join dsa <laughs> and she was like uh does it cost anything yeah there's membership dues but she took a look at it she's like that's fine i'll let you do that that's okay oh Cool. She's quite frugal. She's yeah. frugal, so I'm kind of surprised she agreed to it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to like maybe take the you know fellow traveler out. Yeah, but uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I bought you so much Bernie shit, which is just now on its way. By the way, awesome. this dude's birthday is in April, <laughs> and uh, I ordered it in February. Back so. when it still seemed like a you know a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have some real out of date merch here in a minute. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, all right. So what are your thoughts on joining DSA? What, what was your experience there? The Democratic Socialists of America, by the way, for anybody unfamiliar with the acronym. Yeah. Um, so I had started following them on social media for a few months now. I think I, I, I don't remember when, sometime early this year, probably maybe a little bit last year, mm -hmm. um, because they were a good resource for, honestly, for Bernie organizing stuff. They, like, they were doing a lot of canvassing in Dallas and like phone banks and stuff like that, which I admittedly did not participate in because I'm a lazy piece of shit. But hey, I was up to date <laughs> on it. <laughs> nice. Good. You but, sharing um, it on social media? Yeah. Side note, they have very good branding and like a really good illustrator on their team. Like they have good shit. It's pretty. But yeah, uh, the reason I want to join it is because I, I want to stop being a lazy piece of shit and I want to mm -hmm. do more on the ground stuff. Um, and I thought they would be a good place to learn more. Um, I... I'm following specifically like the North Texas one. So hopefully I can get like local shit. So, yeah. Same. I also followed the, yeah, I, I joined up with the, what is it? The North Texas DSA, I guess yeah. is that chapter. Uh, you sign up like with the, with the main one and then you can go sign up with your local chapter. But, uh, did you sign up for any of the, any of the national priorities or anything on the no, I have DSA site? I have that. I have my email, like the email, the welcome email bookmarked so I can go back and like, Ah, Go through. yeah, you need to do that. Um, I signed up on the, the Medicare for all one and the green new deal one. There were other ones that I was interested in, uh, but they had different requirements for being on them. So I was like, Oh, uh, 
I don't meet that. So, okay. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I should join some of those. What, what does that entail for our listeners and for me? <laughs> for Green New Deal? Yeah. Or whichever ones you joined. So the Green New Deal is, is if for anyone who doesn't know that, that's like a legislative program that's, well, basically just trying to do the work that's necessary to save the planet while, you know, providing a bunch of jobs and, and Dude, yeah. f- fairer work uh, situation for everybody. Dude, yeah, I love um, that shit. The in DSA, their group, working group is called the Eco Socialists, and they're you know campaigning to support the Green New Deal, um, and I suppose you know doing some other actions and stuff to to advance that. I haven't really heard much from any of the ones that I signed up for yet, uh, but I imagine that'll be coming. <laughs> <laughs> we're in, as you can tell, we're not great at even joining things. Is we just <laughs> haven't done that. Much, I just but. I I paid the money. And I clicked the buttons. So, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty lazy. So, but you have to, you actually do have to, though, once you sign, you know, once you join like that, you have to go like sign up for helping with things. Like in, yeah. the, in the Medicare for All one, there's a thing on their page that says the Healthcare Emergency Guarantee Act. And they're doing like a campaign to support, I think it's Bernie Sanders and somebody else's bill to basically have Medicare cover everybody right now. Uh, yeah. And then obviously try to make that happen going forward. Uh, and you can sign up, like sign up to campaign on that. And, and I guess probably phone bank. I don't know what they do. So you <laughs> sign up to learning. try to help and they will. The idea behind organizing, if you're not signing up people yourself, uh, is if you're joining something, um, those organizations, any good functioning one will have people who reach out to you to help you get involved. Like, that's the whole thing is getting, when you get members signing up, they don't really know how to help, but they want to help. Yeah. You know? And so that's where we are. We don't know <laughs> what they really do or anything, but we want to <laughs> help. And so those organizations will say, Hey, I saw you signed up for this. What well, you know, we have these opportunities. What, what are you, you into? Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually looking through their like member resources. Um, and they have lots of different groups. So they have Afro socialists and socialists of color caucus, the disability caucus, Immigrants Rights Working Group. I'm going to see if I can sign up for that. Socialist Feminism, Queer Socialism. Like there's lots of different like sub caucuses in in this. So like I'm probably going to get into that this weekend and see what they need help with. Um, one thing that I'm interested in doing and I, I've already talked to one of my, my communist friends about is like trying to leverage more of like my existing skill set for these people um, and causes that I care about. So like taking on some pro bono design work and stuff and people need that um i think that would be pretty cool um you know if if you have another skill set you think would be useful for different causes like definitely reach out to people and say like hey do you need a social media person do you need a a code person (laughs) there's a word for that developer you know whatever that whatever you're good at you know if you want to try to leverage your um skills that'd be cool yeah for sure i don't have as many applicants but (laughs) Uh, I'm good at talking to people. You should be a canvasser. Yeah. <laughs> You're shy. I am shy. I'm good at talking to people one-on-one, I guess. Which Just is... be a mildly alcoholic canvasser. Just have a little <laughs> flask of whiskey so that you can be relaxed. And then, yeah, that, I mean, it's not a, bad, a terrible idea. <laughs> it is a terrible idea, actually. But It is, um, yeah. Um, and yeah, and for our listeners that like, if you are, you know, one of the privileged people who are working from home now, you likely have a little more time on your hands. You know, you're not going to the movies, you're not going to wherever. So this is a good time to get involved. And, you know, maybe you're a little more involved now. And when things start opening back up, you can scale back. But this is a good time to try out all these different councils and stuff and see which ones you're really passionate about. And, you know, maybe you can scale back in the future. Oh, they let you put your pronouns in on the forum, too. So I'm doing this in real time, listeners. <laughs> okay, so looking at these more, a lot of these talking are talking about calling representatives to support these priorities, you know, whatever they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, just calling people. I hate calling people, but I'll do it. <laughs> they give you a script. And I haven't really seen what they're doing in terms of actions more directly or in the streets or anything, or workplace actions or things supporting labor strikes maybe. I'm sure those, I mean, maybe those will come down, come down the line, but yeah, like you said right now, anyway, it seems like there's a lot of, yeah, more electoral looking. Uh, I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, they are democratic socialists. So they are, they are electoral. <laughs> true. Yeah. True. Um, also 
so that's that's kind of our, I guess, introduction. Maybe you know some little things that we've done. You know, I signed a petition with one of them to. Uh, it was maybe it was North Texas DSA that was doing this with some other coalition or another, but they had a p- petition to release people who are you know release as many people who are incarcerated in DFW area jails yeah. and stuff as possible because of COVID. Just, you know, basically try to keep people alive because it's a horrible situation to be in incarcerated in general but incarcerated while there's a pandemic is yeah for uh, sure it's, inhumane yeah so, it's fucking gruesome uh, same with like detention centers like that's yeah it's essentially death camps at this point so yeah we haven't really done too terribly much you know besides sign up <laughs> as and, you can tell and try to do a little bit uh so listeners if you guys know of any great uh organizations out there that that are you know doing their part to uh to help people to help the proletariat, the working class to help people who need it. Uh, let us know, you know, email us, uh, teach me communism at gmail.com. Uh, we don't know everything as you can, as you have figured out by now, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, in the wimpiest organization corner. Like I, I click some buttons and I put $15 in, <laughs> but you know, Hey, maybe if, if you're sitting there saying, I don't know if I could do that, like you can actually, it's pretty easy, you know? Yeah. Um, and then from there, you know, you can, Take on whatever you can. Uh, yeah. You know, you can start small too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, listeners, if you guys know of any other cool things we should be doing uh, to practice what we preach, let us know. Reach out. Yeah, please do. All right. Want to put a bow on it? Yeah, let's put a bow on that. Um, all right. Next time, what are we learning about? All right. So this time, hopefully you learned everything you need to know about landlords, small landlords, big landlords, uh, all the different types of landlords and how they're they're all kind of lame, you know. Uh, <laughs> next time I want to talk about though all the different types, not all the different types. That would be too many, <laughs> but a lot. lot of different types of leftism, of yes, socialism, communism, and not not like our original like what's the difference theoretically, but like kind of if you ever wondered like what t- am I am I an anarcho communist or am I yeah. a libertarian socialist or what am I? You know, like <laughs> this is kind of what we're gonna be yeah down. And we're not going to get, we're not going to like just bog you down with theory. It's more going to be like situational, you know? Yeah. It's going to be a big, big kind of overview. All right. Uh, well, thank you for listening. Um, as always, you can find us on social um, at Teach Me Communism on Instagram, at Teach Communism on Twitter. And as mentioned earlier, but uh, Teach Me Communism at gmail.com if you want to send us questions, suggestions. Uh, we are still gathering questions for an eventual Q and A episode, so please send those in. Um, also, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts um, and tell your friends about us. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks for teaching me communism. Thanks for being a great student. Thanks for Aww. tuning in, listeners, and catch us next week on Teach Me Communism, where the class struggle is always in session. Mm-hmm.